How long? Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. I'm glad you're in the house. Stick around, and we'll talk cars. I'll answer your car questions, and you know the drill. If you are new to this room, let me share with you a little bit about me and about this room. I'm Bobby Likas. I host Bobby Likas Car Clinic. 18 years, nationally syndicated America's largest privately held network, and also exclusively here on Thursdays from noon till 1 o'clock, and that is Eastern Time, on paltalk.com. This program is designed to help you better understand the car that you drive. I'm also here to share information about renewable energy and, and renewable fuels. It's a passion that I have. And certainly, uh, if you look at the price of gasoline, don't be lulled to sleep. I mean, you, you've heard of the frog, that you, you put a frog in a, a little water that's warm and the frog is comfortable, turn the heat up slowly and the frog stays there and uh, turn the, the heat too fast and the frog starts to try to jump out. But if you turn and uh, turn it down just a bit, that frog is going to hang around. And then the next thing you know, it's too late. The frog is, is boiling and you've got frog legs, if that, if that was your intention. But the bottom line, it wasn't for the frog. So let's don't Let's don't put ourselves in that position of being the frogs because, make no mistake about it, in the mid-70s, we went through the same scenario. It was a blip on the radar at that time, but it's not a blip these days. And a blip on the radar in the mid-70s was an oil embargo that we all had to uh, address. And we had, uh, in, this, in, in the States, if you, if you remember that era, we had ethanol that came in and, and the, the oil companies killed ethanol and ethanol really killed itself you know I won't say the oil companies killed it because I, I, I think that's given them just too much credit although when you have uh, 70 80 billion dollars in profit a year you can do just about anything that you want to do as long as you can make it happen through Washington and uh, I, I will share with you that in the mid 70s Here's what really happened, and here's what happened in service shops and to cars and, and uh, to people that are, are not at the level of, of the government level, but at, at the level that, say, you and I would be, and that would be uh, just regular people. Uh, we all like to think that we're not regular, but we all, we're, we're regular. We have, each of us have our own little idiosyncrasies and, and, and our beliefs, and that's as it should be. And, and some of us are better at other things than others, and, and that's as it should be. But here's what really happened. Because ethanol is a solvent, I mean, you know, it's, it's alcohol, it's grain alcohol, and if it weren't for the fact that it's poisoned uh, after it's uh, uh, refined then or distilled, then we could drink it. Because it's, and probably for those of you, uh, and, and remember chemistry, chem, chemistry class, you may have had your share of uh, grain alcohol before, 190 proof it was. So they poison grain alcohol, and that's ethanol. And we added that to gasoline in the mid-70s, and what, what happened, we took an old gas tank. Let's just say that, well, hey, this is not dirty, but uh, here's a, a, a car clinic cup, and isn't that neat? Stainless steel yet. So here's a cup, and if I wanted to clean it out, if it had um, so, so I could use soap and water, if, if it was water-soluble, dirty, uh, like coffee or what have you. But if it had paint in it, if I'd been painting, I'd have to use mineral spirits or... Uh, uh, some other uh, solvent like that. I could also, if, if it had uh, crustaceans or build up on the walls, I could uh, use a, a solvent. That solvent could easily be grain alcohol. So what happened? All the old cars with carburetors ran, ran around, would, had build up of, of uh, dirt and trash in the fuel lines and, and in the tank. And uh, that, that uh, was emulsified because if you take water, in fact, you, if you uh, live in the, in the northern part of the United States, you, you know that you use uh, sometimes uh, gas additives that are uh, remove the water and, and stop the freezing. Uh, that was also a, a problem that uh, cars had uh, with carburetors because the throttle plate would stick because it would have condensate or water in the gas and, and it would cause needles and seats to stick and, and other too, too technical things for me to get into but the bottom line you, you don't put water in in gasoline but water does uh, you know uh, uh, does build up in gasoline so if you put 
uh, alcohol in there, it will emulsify the water. And it will emulsify uh, uh, just uh, 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 hundreds of, of toxins and other debris that normally would just kind of hang or cling to the walls like a boat. If you've ever seen a boat that's been sitting in the salt water for any length of time, then all, all that bottom, you know, they make they make certain uh, paint that you can just scrape off and clean off and, and that allows you to clean uh, the bottom of the boat much easier. But the bottom line, in a gas tank, a uh, certain accumulation happens, and the, it did happen. And so the, the solvent from the alcohol delivered and emulsified and all that stuff cleaned out the system. That's great. Yeah, it was great <laughs> yeah. until it ended up in the carburetor. And, of course, in a carburetor, a carburetor is, is, is gravity-fed, and the jets of a carburetor, for m most carburetors, there are some different designs, but for most carburetors, the jets control the flow of fuel because you've got this. Just think of a toilet bowl. Imagine. We've all taken the tank off the, you know, the top of a toilet bowl and bent that little lever. Well, inside a gas tank, that's what a gas cinder unit for your gas gauge looks like. It's nothing more than a float that goes up and down, and, uh, and it has to be uh, at the right level, sending the right signal at, at zero and a quarter and half tank and, and so on and so on. Well, inside the carburetor, there's the same identical, when I say identical, uh, the, the, the methodology is identical, and it floats in the liquid. And when it carburetor gets enough liquid in it, it raises that float, and that float through uh, 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 through uh, 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 like a seesaw effect uh, shuts down a valve, and that shuts off the flow of fuel. And now you've got a carburetor that has a level of fuel, just like when you flush a toilet. Uh, you've got a level of water in there that flushes uh, the toilet for you. Well, same thing with it. Well, how when in a toilet you've got a, a big down inlet and it comes around the bowl. In a carburetor. You've got two little jets for, a, like, say, a, a two-throat carburetor or a two-barrel carburetor, it's called. And there were two-barrel, four-barrel, three-barrel, uh, eight-barrel. I mean, you know, if you had eight cylinders and you had a barrel per cylinder, then you, you, you had eight barrels. But each barrel has its own little jet, and its jet was interchangeable. And you could change these jets. Now, the jet was the size of a, hmm, probably 60 thousandths of an inch. Well, how big is that? I would say 60 thousandths of an inch would be the size of the refill, and you, you can see I'm holding a pen, but the, the regular size of a, re, a refill in, a, in this pen, and uh, that would allow only a certain amount of fuel to be uh, pushed into the engine.